So today I want to talk specifically about my battery. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys about it, um, and so I figured I'd go through it. I did another video on the combiner here for the battery, uh, which I'll link in the description, but I kind of wanted to go through the entire setup and what I've used here uh, to make an awesome battery. So from the outside, it might just look like a normal fridge. But get inside here. And you'll see that it's not. <laughs> so uh, I used to have this battery down in my basement. I had it on a bunch of shelves down there. Um, and uh, I decided I wanted to move it into the garage. I didn't really like having it down there. Um, I know the garage is not really an ideal location either, just in case something goes terribly wrong. But uh, it's out here for now. Eventually, I'm going to move it out to the uh, shipping container. So inside here, you can see these eight modules here. Uh, these are out of a Volvo. Uh, they're two kilowatt hours a piece. And then this battery back here, there's three of those. Um, those are out of a Smart for Two. Um, and each one of these, uh, it's a 32S pack here. Uh, each one of those is, I think, five and a half kilowatt hours. Um, so then we'll move up top here. And here we have a Nissan Leaf battery uh, that I built. Uh, well, I didn't build the battery itself, but I put it all together. I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, for this build as well. Um, but uh, so this is another about three kilowatt hours. Uh, so all in total, I have about 36 kilowatt hours. And uh, it's working really well. So my battery is a 16S. Uh, if you see with the Nissan Leaf cells, these are each 2S. So I have eight of these uh, in series and that makes 16S. And then the Volvo packs are also 16S. Um, the Smart for Two was actually 32S um, and I was able to pull the tabs apart in the middle and drop it down to 16. That was the first, uh, first battery I ever worked with. Um, and so then on each one of those 16S modules, I'm using one of these DALI BMSs. Um, and the ones I'm using are 40 amp, uh, let's see, 40 amp discharge, 40 amp charge. Um, and so it, it's basically just a dumb BMS. Uh, it doesn't have any, you know, readouts or anything. Um, it just does what it's supposed to do, uh, which is shut down, the, shut down that module if anything goes wrong. Um, it's got, uh, what is it? It's got overcurrent protection as well. Um, and I've actually tested that on these uh, unintentionally, um, and it does work. I had an inverter that shorted out. Uh, it was a uh, MPP Solar, um, got sat on, don't ask why, uh, but it shorted out. And this BMS shut right down, and I tried it a couple times, and it would not let more than a little blip of current through. Um, so it did really well. I had one of these Volvo modules. This, uh, this Volvo module was, was in with the rest of them, and uh, I was measuring, uh, you know, I, I go in and I, I check the current on each one of them just to make sure they're all working. And I was measuring this one and I couldn't get it to work. And if you can see that gap right there in between the cells, um, that actually uh, had a bad cell in it. So I'm getting rid of this if anybody wants it. So like I said, each one of the uh, modules has uh, one of these BMSs hooked up and then they're all wired with 10 gauge wire uh, into the combiner. So let's bring you over there and I'll open that up and show you what's going on inside there. Before we go over into the combiner, I wanted to show you this heater mat that I have underneath here. Uh, this is a seedling starter mat uh, that I got off Amazon and I will leave a link for that in the description as well. Um, I have one hiding underneath this pack as well. Uh, and they are hooked up. There's a uh, temperature sensor hanging down right in here. Um, and they're hooked up to a controller right over here. So there's the controller, just drilled a couple of holes through the, through the fridge there. Um, but the main reason for putting this battery in a fridge is that I live in Vermont and I don't want it to freeze. Um, so this uh, allows me to keep the battery heated without using too much power. These seedling starter mats really don't get very hot, um, you know, up to like 80 or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but uh, they, they use about 20 watts a piece when they're running. Um, and it's a very, a very safe way of, of keeping a heater inside this fridge. So I haven't actually tried plugging the fridge in because I don't need any active cooling. All 
All right, so this is the DC combiner. And these are using Square D QO breakers. So each module has its own two pole 20 amp breaker. I have a few that are off, I'm putting some more in later. And each one is hooked up to its own breaker. So that gives it overcurrent protection on both ends, uh, one at the BMS and one on this side here. Okay, so this is the inside of the load center. So I have all of the batteries coming out, uh, just to drill the hole through the side of the fridge. Uh, that's coming out from the, uh, the bottom section from the fridge and there's one coming out from the freezer. And then I have uh, positive and negative tied into each one of these breakers. So then I have the positive coming out right here the negative coming out over here. And then I've also put this shunt in here. Uh, that's for the, uh, the XW Pro. Uh, that's for the bot battery monitor, which you can see right up there. Um, so the shunt's there, and then they give you a whole ton of extra wire, uh, which I've just kind of coiled up in there. Um, but that's the, uh, what is that, prescaler for the shunt uh, for the battery monitor. So um, a lot of people probably don't know that uh, QO, Square D QO load centers um, and their breakers are actually rated for DC voltage. So Square D QO load centers are actually rated for DC voltage along with AC voltage. And these are the only ones that I know of that have that rating. Um, so in this configuration here, I'm using a 60 volt system. So uh, with Above 48 volts, you need to use a two pole breaker uh, and you need to have positive into one side and negative into the other side. Um, if you are below 48 volts, and that's a hard 48 volt, that's not a 48 volt system, it's a hard 48. If you're below that, you can use a single pole breaker uh, and then you can tie all of the negatives. So single pole breaker would be for the positive. You tie all the negatives into the neutral bus isolated from the tub um, and you can use you know a, a ton of single pole breakers to combine these together that would be for you know 24 volt system up to 36 um, but uh, but yeah so these are uh, <laughs> the, the single pole breakers are UL listed for up to 48 volts the two pole breakers are rated by the manufacturer up to 120 volts DC um, but they are not UL listed, um, but the manufacturer says it's okay to do it. Um, so I'll, I'll take their word for it. So I really like uh, having all the batteries tied in uh, using their own breaker. Um, and I like being able to, you know, I can, I can shut one off at a time. I can check through it. Um, I do put an amp clamp on uh, each one of these. Uh, while it's charging or discharging, just, just to make sure there's, there's current flowing on all of them. Um, and, uh, th you know, that, that's how I found that one bad battery. Um, there was no current flowing on that one. And so I looked into it a little bit and uh, there it was. So I know some of you are gonna be wondering, how can you put all of these battery modules together in parallel uh, and have them all work together? Um, you know, it, all the manufacturers and everything, they say, oh, you have to have exact length uh, wires, you know, positive and negative. They have to be all the same length. You have to tie them together on a big bus bar. Um, you can't mix and match different size batteries. And from their point of view, uh, I mean, it's, it's somewhat true. Uh, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're pulling a continuous heavy load on these things, you will see a lot more amperage coming from one battery versus the other. Um, but it, honestly, I'm not pulling a ton of amps all the time. You know, right now I've been running off grid all weekend right now and pulling 30 amps. Um, if I go to each one of any one of these batteries, you know, you'll see a couple amps coming off of it. Let's go to pick one, random one, two amps. Pick another one, 1.7 amps. Take the Nissan Leaf battery, 0.5 amps. And so 
they're all gonna be different, you know, no matter what. And so when I originally built this, I was trying to keep all of my wire lengths exactly the same length, but really it's it's not the wire length that matters in here. It's the, it's the impedance of the battery itself. Um, and, you know, I have three different types of batteries in here uh, and they all work together. Um, if you pull a heavy load, you know, 100 amps, 150 amps off of this thing, uh, you will see, you know, it pulls more from some batteries uh, than it does from others. Um, but then you'll get balance current going between them. As soon as that load goes away, you know, like the dryer shuts off or something, you'll get batteries balancing each other out because they're all tied together in parallel. So honestly, um, you know, I, I've, I've measured a couple of these batteries under heavy load, 150 amp load, and they'll never get over 20 amps, which is why I use 20 amp breakers here. Um, and I've never had one go out of balance because that load is not continuous. So some validity to it, but uh, in a situation, in a, re in a residential situation like mine, you're perfectly fine connecting them together in parallel. All right, guys, well, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how I built these batteries, I will leave a link in the description below. Um, I'll also leave links to the seedling starter mat with the temperature controller uh, and all the Schneider equipment that I'm using here. If you're interested, go check it out. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.